In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up PowerShell's Just Enough Administration, or GIA for short. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that for this exercise, you will need to be running at least PowerShell 5.1 in order to get the full functionality of GIA. I've also provided a link to a GIA overview page. This page contains a lot more information on GIA, as well as a link which lays out the prerequisites. Now let's get started. To configure GIA, we're going to need to set up a few things. First, we need to create a module folder which will contain a file that will tell PowerShell what the user connecting to the GIA endpoint has access to run. So let's create the folder. I'm going to call it Help Desk because I want to create a GIA endpoint that Help Desk employees can use. Since this is a module and it will be deployed to the server where our GIA endpoint will be running, you could also create a PSM1 file which contains any functions that you would like users of this endpoint to have access to. For simplicity, I'm going to just leave this file blank and give access to built-in commandlets later. Next, I'm going to create a new module manifest called helpdesk.psd1. Now that the module is set up, we need to create a folder in the module called role capabilities. In this folder, we are going to create a new PS role capability file, and I'm going to call it helpdeskgiarole.psrc. Let's open the new PS role capability file. This file is what is going to tell the GIA endpoint what the user logging in has access to do. In this file, you can specify things like modules to import, visible aliases, visible commandlets, and functions. You can also specify visible external commands like ping or ipconfig, for example. But for this demo, I am only going to use the visible commandlets. I like to keep the example that is provided commented out for reference and just start a new line. For visible commandlets, I'm going to specify the get service commandlet. This will give users access to use get service but no other commandlets. You can also use wildcards here if you want as well. Let's save that file and go back to our setup script. Our next step is to create a PS session configuration file. When we go to create our new GIA endpoint, this file is going to tell PowerShell how that endpoint should be configured. So let's create that new file with a session type of restricted remote server. And let's take a look at that file. In this file, we're going to concentrate on the last section, role definitions. I'm going to copy the example to a new line to make my edits. Role definitions is a hash table which you can use to specify who has access to this endpoint and what role capabilities they will have. I'm going to edit this value to give the user Matt, which is myself, access to this endpoint. And I'm going to tell it to give me the help desk GIA role role capability. It will find this in the module that we are going to deploy to the remote server later. Let's save that file and go back to our setup. I'm going to run test ps session configuration file to make sure that my file looks good. I get a value of true which means the test passed. If I go to my help desk folder, you can see our module files as well as our role capabilities file. At the root level of my GIA folder, you can also see my help desk endpoint ps session configuration file. Now that we have our files that we need created and configured, let's go on to the endpoint setup. First, I'm going to open up a new session to my remote server in order to copy the necessary files and configure the GIA endpoint. Then, I'm going to copy my help desk module, which contains my role capabilities file, to the modules folder on the remote server. Now, I'm going to copy the PS session configuration file to the C drive on the remote server. Once all the files are in place, I'm going to use invoke command to register the new endpoint using the session configuration file and I'm going to call that endpoint help desk. Sometimes this will throw me an error because WinRM needs to restart. In this case it did throw an error, but I should be all set to move forward. Before I connect to the new endpoint, I'm going to switch to the PowerShell console and enter a new session to the default endpoint on server 1. If I run get ps session configuration, this will list the available endpoints on that server. As you can see, we have a help desk endpoint and under permission, we see the account that we gave access to during the setup. 
And just to demonstrate that I have all commandlets available to me, I'm going to run get command. Now let's switch back to the ISE and enter a PS session to server 1, but this time we are going to specify the configuration name as help desk. If I run get command here, you can see that I only have a handful of commands available to me. Some get included by default, but you can see that we have get service at the bottom of the list which I specified in the role capabilities file. I can now run get service to see the list of services on this server. I can also use the name parameter to specify the name of a particular service. But what happens when I try to run stop service? That commandlet is not available to me on this endpoint. The same is true if I try to run another commandlet like get process. And that is how to set up PowerShell's just enough administration.